that I do may or may not have had to uh, verify your SSH keys lately. Um, that's because uh, GitHub basically got caught with their pants down. I don't really know what they were doing, but uh, so you know they use Rails, and uh, somebody kind of pointed out to them that their uh, application could kind of be hacked, sort of. Um, basically, they, they weren't using this this thing in their models. So I guess you go to the next slide. That's kind of my intro. So <coughs> this whole thing is about that and what they didn't do what you all should be doing if you're writing Rails. And it's really easy to use. I mean, all you got to do is write attribute accessible in your model and, and put your fields that you want to be able to set on your model. That's all you got to do. I mean, really. Or slow down. <laughs> so, okay, so this is, this is active record base, right? This is your models. So it sparked an interesting discussion because people are like, oh, it should do that automatically. And you're not supposed to be doing that in your models. You're supposed to be doing it in your controllers and all sorts of crap. And who cares? It's, just, it's there. Put it in. Just put it there. Seriously. It's not that hard. I mean, this, this model does three times as much stuff as the, the attribute accessible thing just by doing a couple other lines. <coughs> Excuse me. So your general rule of thumb should be don't commit a model without it. Like don't even don't even save it. If you, if you do Rails generate model, open it, put an attribute accessible, and then hit save. It's, it's not that hard. So next slide. Uh, does just putting attribute accessible like a blacklist all or doesn't allow any to be written? It's a whitelist. Right, so I mean, um, with no arguments. That, just having um, it in there does that disable everything? Yeah. Okay. So there's some there are some people talking online like, oh, you can do this in an initializer to force that to basically set it all. I, but you can do this instead. I don't know if everybody can see it, but you could in the latest versions of Rails, I think it's starting with three three oh. Yeah. This is in your configuration file in, in uh, environment.rb. And this basically does what you're saying. It makes it so that all the models have to use attribute accessible in them. And if they don't, you can't set anything through uh, update attributes. But uh, I know there's one person who said they're a DHH person follower or whatever. But he mentioned on Twitter, like, oh, at 37 signals, we do this in the controllers, too. Um, that doesn't mean you should not put attribute accessible in your models, but this is just kind of an extra layer of protection for you. Um, you can just pull out your params and Calling slice on the hash will <coughs> return a hash with just the keys that you give the call to slice. So that won't work with you know nested attributes and some more complicated things. But it's also I mean that's not a lot of code either. So if anybody's complaining about doing too much work or whatever, that's not that hard. If you're really into like object oriented programming and you like doing a lot of busy work. You could do this mix in into your controller <laughs> with like inheritance and stuff, and like you can call this sanitize for mass assignment and all this stuff. And it's like it's uh, basically takes the the stuff that's in Active Record is actually in this this module now in the newest versions of Rails, and uh, you can take that module, mix it into your controller, get the same thing in your controller too. So you can do that, or, or you know, you can just set this to true in your configuration, and it'll throw exceptions and, and be all noisy and whiny when you forget attribute accessible. So that's probably a good, a good thing to do, you know, because then people won't be like, "Hey, I just set this SSH." Yeah. And does that actually complain, or does it just fail silently, like you know, normally if you have something that's not whitelisted and you try and pass assign it, it just doesn't pass assign it. Um, yeah, I think it just fails silently and doesn't do anything. Okay. I haven't actually, here's the thing, I turn this on, but all my models have attribute accessible in them, and then I have specs that check that certain things are accessible. Sure. So I just wanted to clarify between whiny and noisy and fail silently. Yeah. Uh, because I, that's, I think that's the big complaint about. It says yeah, something in the log, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah, it doesn't throw an exception or it doesn't raise an right. exception. Yeah, it just 2.2 does now yeah, but if you use protected attributes in your parse. 
three up, two down, two. Yeah, and uh, there's a there's also a thing now in. I'm gonna stop that because that's annoying me. I'm sure it's annoying else. I don't know what it's for. I assume it says you're supposed to be here tonight. Probably not. It's probably yeah. like I have to be someplace else. Let's see what you got. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, Google is down. That's yeah. what it's down. Okay, next slide. <laughs> Maybe. So putting attributes, so this is sort of play to the discussion of where do you put it? Is it in your models? Those are supposed to be business logic. Maybe we shouldn't do authorization stuff or business logic. Maybe that should be in the controllers because those concerns are, are uh, you know, authorization, whatever. It's the whole thing, the whole discussion is stupid. You should just use it in your models. But here's a picture, of a, picture of, a, of a prison. And you know how they, they bolt everything to the floor? It's like you can't, they can't, the inmates can't pick up the chairs and like beat the guards and stuff. That's kind of what putting attribute accessible in your models is like. It's like you're bolting everything in your house down so that if somebody gets in, they're not going to steal stuff or rearrange the furniture. It's going to stay where you put it, <laughs> which is a good thing. Okay, next slide. <coughs> if you only put it in your controllers, it's like locking your front door and just leaving your furniture the way it is, which, which can be cool because you can rearrange your furniture however you want, but we all know that just locking your front door it, it keeps some people out, but it's really not that hard to just do that, you know, or, or just go around to the side door because you didn't lock that, right? Because you left and forgot. I don't know. But it, did I lock that door? I don't remember. So you could do both. That's a good idea, too. Or you could just do the models. But doing just controllers, I think, is stupid. So next slide. These guys are going to get in anyway. <laughs> so you might as well put it in your models, right? And put it in your controllers. If you're really like, okay, we're going to start like exposing APIs to people and, and those kinds of things. These are inmates, in case you can tell. <laughs> running the asylum. So, next slide. Basically, put it in your models. So, I don't know if I've been clear on that. <laughs> but it's really easy to use, so you should use it for once. Um, you should probably be doing code reviews of having other developers look at your code before it goes to production. I don't really know how GitHub works or how their whole thing slipped through their system. Um, uh, this was the thing I was pointing out. Put that in your uh, configuration file. If you really need to, maybe you could write a commit hook that just rejects your commit if you have models without actually accessible in there. Uh, and don't use attribute protected because that's blacklisting. And everybody knows that whitelisting is better than blacklisting, right? <laughs> Jeez. Because blacklisting is not good because you're going to forget something in your blacklist of things not to do. You know, it's like uh, writing laws or something. It's, you're going to miss something. You're going to leave some loophole in there and somebody's going to find it. Um, yeah, and don't leave them out your pants. I mean, really. Come on, don't put this code in production unless it's got accessible in models. That's my presentation. Feel free to talk to us yourself. <laughs> there are any differing opinions other than I don't want to know if you think you should leave home without your pants. Okay. What's so, oh, sorry, go ahead. Nate does, but Nate always does, and he's what? hesitating. No, I didn't I didn't have anything. Right. I think protected is usable. You just gotta be careful when you use the thing in certain cases. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it, you might think it's convenient because it's like, oh, instead of putting a list of all attributes, fields, your list, yeah, so I just put in like admin ID or something in attribute protected, which is cool until you come along and you add super user ID and you forget to add it to your prote attribute protected. And then somebody's like, hey guys, I think you should change this. And then you're like, no, it's not a problem. And then you're like, fine. I'm gonna, Whatever the guy did on GitHub. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. if you don't know, he he was able to uh, basically change um, DHH's key, SSH key, to his own key so that he could commit to Rails as DHH. Um, on GitHub. On GitHub. He was able to commit directly to Rails Master on GitHub some, in some manner. Um, 
Hopefully he added specs. <laughs> <laughs> like that's the commit I would have made. <laughs> wow, that'd be you. I don't even remember what he added, but I think if I remember <coughs> there's, there's a certain ha-ha like, aspect to it. So some people were mad at him because they felt like he only did it because uh, he had sour grapes about uh, Rails Core not listening to him when he told them that they needed to make uh, attribute accessible automatic by default, essentially. Um, and he kept trying to tell them that this is affecting lots of Rails developers, not just newbies, and they were like, well, it's in the documentation, it's in the documentation. So then he sort of proved his point <laughs> by proving that GitHub uh, doesn't do it themselves. So, yeah. Has Rails' opinion changed at all on that being the default? Uh, not yet. I'm not sure, like, everyone is cooled down enough to <laughs> be objective about it. But, yeah. I, in my opinion, I mean, it's, there's always something. You can't, it can't, Rails cannot be completely idiot proof sure. for production code. I mean, you're, you're programming here. You're programming a computer to do things. This is not like Fisher Price topic toys that we're playing with here. You know, we should all be professionals, and there are some things that we have to double check before we commit our code and before we push it to production. But 10 years ago, it used to be making sure you are escaping your strings properly and untainting them or whatever for SQL injection. Now we've got attribute accessible in our models. Okay, make sure you check that. There's always something that you need to be checking. I don't think that Rails should do it for you. Because, um, like my earlier metaphor, it is nice to like rearrange the furniture until you've got it how you like it, and then you bolt it down. Um, which is kind of what DHH's point was, is that it's really, it's really nice to be able to just do update attributes and throw stuff in the database when you're in the console or working or whatever. Um, Would you support it in production environments uh, by default? Um, um, I yeah, think that, that would be works really well in development. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a, a well, yeah. That's a trap. <laughs> hey, well, you learn the hard way, yeah, right? You, <laughs> you fix it really fast. <laughs> Yeah, probably not. And it silently <laughs> discards data. Right, it's true. It's just like, yeah, nothing works now. I don't know why. Well, we'll make it raise an exception. <laughs> works on my machine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> works for me. You're doing it wrong. <laughs> then you're going to end up combing the production.log file for all the data that got discarded. I'm just saying, you're going to do it once and then never again. You're going to less in the first time. Does anybody yeah, think it belongs see. in the Let's controller? See. Actually, Actually Rails is requiring it now almost with 3.2.2. Um, we had a case where all of a sudden we got errors because the params had the protected attributes in it. And even though you haven't protected the model, if you create a new project in 3.2.2, there's a config option that it will throw a security error and just error. Really? So you have to slice out those params that are protected now. Yeah, they made slice the or untape the hash or something. Mm -hmm. so. That's the other thing, too. You know, you should never trust the user's input to your application. You should you should be doing something with the input as it comes in before it goes to your database and then sanitizing it properly as it comes out of the database back to the user. That's just common sense, which don't always do that. Yeah, and, and checking it in both places, I mean, with GitHub, I can certainly imagine a scenario where you have two guys, one of whom does it in the controller, one of whom does it in the model, and those ships just passed at exactly the wrong time in developing the, the keys page. I can definitely see that happening where two people had different ideas of how it was supposed to go. So, Wasn't the that the most important like, model? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's <so> true. <laughs> yeah. The, like, the you more you can protect yourself, the better. Because, and the other thing is, like, I don't know how future Miles is about stuff like this, but future Nate is an idiot. <laughs> he has no idea how the application works. Yeah. So I don't want him to be able to go in and open security holes with a couple keystrokes. And also, past Miles, total asshole. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hate that guy. <laughs> I am an idiot. Yep. And then, you, you know, you'll have things like uh, background workers and stuff throwing data in your models. You know, your controller's not always the only consumer of your model objects. So, your model objects should protect themselves. And if you use this, just remember, when you when you save something and then you get that stupid thing that says you tried to write to a 
protected attribute, and you're like, well, but I wanted to do that. I'm in the console, you dumb thing. <laughs> Just use the, the square brackets and a symbol, and you can get right, right around it. And then you'll end up with that in your controller somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can also open the block here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool.